one of the ways that biological anthropology uh, can inform some really important discussions that are happening in, in, in our world about things like race um, is to put a much wider perspective on it. So for instance, um, one of the things that we have been able to discover by studying the genetics of humans across the planet is that um, humans are and descended from, came from Africa, that we are an African species. And we find fossils of things, the earliest fossils that we have that are homo sapiens, that are us, um, are from the African continent. And so to a biological anthropologist, we are African. We are a, a, a single African species, and a very small subset of an African species no longer lives in Africa and happens to live in, in Asia and Europe and, and the Americas and uh, has been very successful, of course, inhabiting all different ecosystems around the globe. But ultimately, we are a recent African species that evolved only about 150 to 200,000 years ago. And so this notion of, of racial categories to a biological anthropologist is, is, is actually, um, it, it doesn't fit with our data. Um, our scientific data doesn't match up with these racial categories that have been culturally constructed. Um, now, one of the anatomies that's used, or one of the characteristics that's used in order to, in, in order to categorize people has been skin coloration. And to a biological anthropologist, it's an opportunity to demystify race a little bit and to talk about why are humans, why do humans around the world have these different skin colorations? And what's been learned is that there's this absolutely fascinating tug of war that's been going on um, between vitamin D production and folic acid protection in the skin as a result of the ultraviolet radiation coming from the sun. And that individuals with rather light skin around the equator uh, are going to have the problem of folic acid destruction. So those individuals who had darker skin are going to be uh, selectively advantageous, that those individuals are going to be able to uh, 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 grow healthier babies than those with lighter skin coloration. And then those that are further from the equator um, are going to have a challenge of vitamin D production. And those with darker skin who are, who are, who are sort of um, uh, been uh, uh, able to, to, to block UV radiation from the sun uh, are not making as much vitamin D, and the vitamin D is essential for growing skeletons. And so those individuals may not survive as well. But what's really interesting, what's been superimposed on all of this is, of course, culture. And the fact that you can now drink milk that's vitamin D fortified, and you can live in an area and wear sunscreen. And so all of the, the aspects of modern culture superimposed on biological changes to one aspect of our anatomy, skin coloration, I, I think forms this really, really fascinating dance in terms of our understanding of race. But what I want to emphasize is that, is that skin coloration is one aspect of so many different ways that humans can be, can be understood and clustered into groups. And the fact that that has been used to categorize humans into these different racial categories when you could use a thousand different other characteristics that would give you a different story um, is really uh, uh, puzzling and frustrating to a biological anthropologist. And so to us, race is not a biological concept at all. Race biologically doesn't exist. But of course, it does exist. And so this is a, this is a cultural construct and something we live with. But a biological anth anthropologist can inform the discussion by saying, look, there's no biological basis for these categories that you have been forming.